Good afternoon, everyone. Record heat, record cold, sandwiched against each other in Europe. Oh, we're seeing the exact same thing. Another polar vortex 2.0 on the way to the States, February 9th. Lake Erie ice, vertical growth. Global temperatures, northern hemisphere cools, southern hemisphere warms. Global temperatures up 0.37 off the 30-year average. Antarctica cools by almost half a degree Celsius. And a surprising new picture of ocean current circulation. Wait, I thought the science was settled. And if you're interested in how our sun affects our earth, our climate, our magnetosphere, everything moving forward into this grand solar minimum, electric universe reading list adapt 2030 store, as well as grand solar minimum reading list with a full rundown of what you can expect moving into 2025. All the links are in the description box below the video. All the while the super freeze going on back in the United States, Europe experiencing the exact same thing. Record heat on one side of the jet stream, record cold on the other side of the jet stream. Jet streams are broken at the moment. They're out of place with the wrong temperatures in the wrong locations in the wrong season. And then he said, well, that's Europe and it's the United States as well. Abnormal heat following the super freeze, yet another super freeze 2.0 polar vortex on the way February 9th, 10th, and 11th to sweep down all the way to Texas and Louisiana this time. This is exactly what you're looking at. Jet streams are out of their normal flow patterns due to our magnetosphere weakening as we get deeper into the grand solar minimum. If it's like this in 2019, I am terrified what's going to happen in 2023. The day after tomorrow... Which picture's on the left? Which picture's on the right? Oh, Chicago's on the left. This last super freeze, Polar Vortex 1.0, 2019. I wonder if this was prophetic programming from Hollywood. Hmm, makes you think for a second there, doesn't it? But anyway, the artists are out over the ice. Not much else to do when you're locked down in coldest temperatures ever recorded. And as the Polar Vortex swept across the Great Lakes, you would expect massive ice gains but not this massive that is vertical ice growth it went from three percent to 90 percent covered in just two weeks this is astounding the amount of ice coverage wide that out for you here so you can take a look doesn't normally have this trajectory that straight up it's more of a curve up lake erie's pretty much at 100 percent coverage now nice satellite image here of ice cover and clouds off the goes visible I'm taking a look at the Great Lakes surface data. This comes off NOAA. If you see blue, that's open water. To the percentages of how much it's frozen or not. Anything that's gray, 100% coverage. Still have quite a bit to go on Superior here on Michigan. And on the grayscale map, you can really see the progression. This is a week old compared to the previous colored schematic that you saw. These changes are rapid. And we'll see if this sets the fastest pace for all-time record ice growth on the Great Lakes. Here we're coming out, Washington Post. A surprising new picture of ocean circulation currents. New research just published. Now, wait a second. I thought the science was settled. I thought they knew every mechanism, every inkling of the way the climate moves to guarantee us 90% of the scientists. Oh, it was 97. It's dropped to 90 now. Agree with global warming and CO2 being the main cause driver on the planet. Uh, I guess this new research means that it's not settled. Jumping over to Dr. Roy Spencer's site here, taking a look at the January global temperatures up a little bit from December. 0.37 now, over the 30-year baseline average. A bit better glimpse for you here. Follow the arrow, far right side, 2019. Now what I like about Dr. Spencer's site is he breaks it down by region on the planet so you can really get a good indication of what's cooling, what's warming. So January 2018 compared to January 2019, anywhere in the blue boxes is a decrease. And where do you see all the decreases in this? The Northern Hemisphere. Second question, where are most of the grains on our planet grown in terms of food belt and crop production? The Northern Hemisphere. Southern Hemisphere is warming. 
northern hemisphere is cooling, but we produce much more food in the northern hemisphere. And a caveat to the warming southern hemisphere, Ryan Maui putting out the Antarctic temperatures down half a degree cooler than the normal during the penguin summer. So I'm wondering if this is an indication that as we go through the next two seasons that the southern hemisphere will start to cool as well, starting with Antarctica, because the grand solar minimum is in full amplification mode at the moment. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you'd like more information like this, 30 minutes at a time, mini Ice Age Conversations podcast anywhere. Podcasts are hosted across the net. And for those of you who like snippets of information, one minute or less, this is a rundown here on the Adapt 2030 social media feeds. I'm going to be adding Gab and Mines into this as well over the next day.